Let's go back here to my speaker view. Welcome all to this lovely day. I'm here in Hawaii, across the world from many of you. And um, welcome to this day. We're going to be, I'm going to be sharing information about the type of ground driving that we do with the Tellington Method. And I'm going to begin by just showing you a short six minute video of an overview uh -huh. of what we do with the ground driving with young horses. And the ground driving is a part of all that we do with starting young horses. And then I'm going to be talking about how I started doing this when I was 12 years old mm -hmm. and how we've over the years developed it, what made me add stuff and details and change it. And then um, I'm going to show you a series of pictures oh, of a horse, uh, a 10 year old Arabian stallion of how we change in three days, in a three day sport horse training in Italy, how we Here are some turn images that of 10 -year -old horse around. So I'm sorry, I just have to turn off my phone here. Yep. Okay. So I am going to now screen share with you and I'm not going to put the sound on because I'm going to talk you through this. Oh gosh. <laughs> Bear with me a second. I had this up. What on earth here? Sorry, well, little technicalities here. I don't know what's happening. Here. Linda, I'll take a moment while off. you're doing that. Could everyone check um, and make sure they're muted, please? Oh, gosh. Just one moment. Bear with me. Breathe. Enjoy. Think about your horses. Let's imagine, first of all, while I'm pulling this up, um, that you invite your horses in to this Zoom session with us. Imagine that you are either standing with them in the stable or you're bringing them to you right here in your home and that they can experience some of this also with you. So this is um, a YouTube video that my magical, marvelous niece, Mandy Pretty, put together. Um, and it is about, um, let's see how I can find this, um, about how starting young horses at Bitterroot Ranch in, Gal in um, Du Bois, Wyoming. And for, I think it was a total of 25 years, we went there one week a year. And I did it for the first, like, I think 21 years. And then Mandy and Robin went without me and continued for a number of years. So I'm just going to show you an overview because ground driving is part of what we do. So I'm going to start this and just talk you through it. Um, let's see if I can. So this is the ranch is located in the Du Bois, Wyoming, absolutely spectacular country, 17 miles <laughs> um, down a road at the end of a road and just connected to this beautiful mountain range. And it's the, um, Bitterroot Ranch, and this particular training was the 22nd one we done. And these are horses that were bred by um, Mel Fox. And I'm just going to stop and talk, kind of talk through as we go. Mel has been breeding horses uh, on this ranch for many, many years. And she had an incident about 27 years ago now when somebody came yeah, in to Trina. break um, her horses and wound up having a really bad accident. And she read man. about uh, me can't. and the work that we do in Western Horsemen and called me and asked me if I would do a training there. And that's how it all started. And this, what we did, uh, instead of just me going there in the beginning, I did workshops there. And I think, Cindy, I, I believe you must have been there. I think probably 
Jane was here. Jane Stewart was also in one of those trainings. And certainly, um, of course, Pam Beats was there. And I'm, I'm going to have you, those of you who were there, just talk a little bit about it and uh, after. So this was yeah. like, we. it was a, a combination over um, seven days of working with the horses and learning the work, sitting in circle and learning the work. This is my sister, Robin. Huh? teaching uh, uh, and we uh, group. Uh, and the thing that's so beautiful about this is that everybody stays together so this is one day consists of the groups becoming acquainted with the horses and many of the horses have had limited handling but they're not afraid of people because they were just very gently um started by Mel as foals, halter trained, not halter broken. And what we do with these horses, it's just going over all of them and standing around like this, just picking up, being able to pick up the feet. This would have been on the fourth day. And these are participants. And what is different about our trainings is we work the horses in groups. And I just want to stop this a moment and say why we do that. When you have a horse alone, when you take a horse away from the, you know, their friends or away from a herd and put them in a situation, whether it's a round pen or just taking them away to do something with them that's different, it's scary for them. And that's why we work these horses all together. And I don't have, I think towards the end, there's a photograph of, um, of them all being together. But the way we start them is just being, bring them into the corral and just having them stand around and then simply hanging out with them, being there, kind of walking around. And it varies from group to group, depends how many we have. But we would generally have about five young horses, sometimes as many as eight or nine young horses. And we, in the, for many years, we started them as three-year-olds. And then we started waiting until they were four. And some of these years, we didn't start these horses until they were four years old. And this is a group, this would have already been on the fourth day. And they have the, the figure eight uh, body wrap on them to give them boundaries. And this horse is carrying a surcingle um, without the saddle pad yet under it. Well, I'm just going to, and if you have questions, you can just write them down. Now, part of this training that we do before they're ever ground driven for young horses, that is, is get them going over things, getting them stepping. Like this is a big deal for this horse to be able to step up and hear the noise of the of the bridge. And this is a really practical preparation here in Bitterroot because horses have to cross a river with a, a, a bridge, with a wooden bridge. And it's, it's a really strange thing for them to do the first time. And you notice that I have a wand in my hand. We don't call these, this is a four foot dressage whip, stiff, white, so they can see it. And we don't call it a whip because if we did, those of you who have seen horses whipped with them don't have a very good uh, feeling. And what we do is to use this to go over the whole horse's body and give them a sense of themselves. So that's one of the things is getting things underneath them, stepping over it. Uh, and this is already, I'll stop that. This is a picture ground driving already. This would have been on the probably the fifth day. They have a saddle pad under a surcingle on a person leading at the head. And because this is not yet driving from the halter. This is just driving and you'll see pictures where you can actually see the, the, um, the, the ropes around the neck. This is driving off the chest and I'll explain after why we do this. We'll go on now. And this is going under pool noodles. Now, we do this with young horses, but if you have a horse that has any 
like issues that eh, sometimes make you a little uncomfortable, maybe a little spooky, a little hot sometimes. Um, we put them through what we call the playground for higher learning. And this is first you went over something that makes a sound like wood. We don't have them step on plastic at first because that can be really scary. But wood is something solid under them. And this is going under. These are pool noodles, simple to use. Um, why do we do that? Because <laughs> if any of you started young horses and uh, hadn't gone through these steps, Oh my goodness, I remember, was that a hung, I can't remember, I think it was a young Arab I was starting in 1963. I, I rode him out for the first time through the sagebrush that we had in Las Osos at the time. And I remember I just reached up to adjust my hat and bam, <laughs> it scared him. He took a jump and dumped me. Now, so this preparation, of getting horses to go under things before you start them. Now, this is also true of, I've had horses that came from um, Europe that hadn't had this, that were really spooky about even putting a blanket over the horse's head. So this can be an older horse that you will find this a really useful lesson to do. Now, why do we have a person on both sides leading? This is what we call the homing pigeon position, because when you lead them from both sides, they have to use this sense of boundaries from both left and right. It activates both sides of the brain. And we call it the journey of the homing pigeon because it's the end of the flight reflex. You can take a horse who's like nervous about maybe just having the right hind foot picked up by the farrier. Because that's a common thing for many horses who are always led from the left. So we work them from both sides. Mm -hmm. And by having a person stand up on the hay bale, uh, uh, this is just the first time you can see only one person is up, the other is still on the ground. So it's a little uh, less boundaries for this horse. And we don't ever push them. We give them a chance to stop and think. And if they're hesitant, then we give them a little food just to get them to chew because when a horse chews, it activates the parasympathetic state where they can think. Linda? So for those of you who've been here, boy, seeing those mountains in the background, it's such a wonderful thing. Now you can see we just stopped here to let this horse think a little bit. And here, there, oops, ooh, I meant to stop that. There we were using wands. So it's a little less intimidating, it's a little less over the head to start with. And this is now, if you look carefully, we're holding poles up. The horse is going between these two poles just to give her boundaries to step up. And you can see she's a little uncertain. Look at her ears. She's saying, I don't know about this. And we have the wrap around the hindquarters and around the chest. And for those of you who don't know, Robin has written a beautiful book um, called Wrap It Up for Horses. We also have Wrap It, wrap it Up for uh, Companion Animals for Dogs and Kitties. And then she's done another one for humans. And this gives the horse a feeling of safety and of boundaries. Now we'll go on to the next one. And this is going over the, 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 the platform and under. And that's without the driving in. Oh, this was such an incredible experience. Everybody got to stay in these wonderful um, cabins and we sat around on the porch, everyone ate together, had happy hour together. That was an amazing time. And um, this idea, I'm gonna stop this so you can just watch this, look carefully. This is where this horse has the saddle pad and the surcingle and a front piece 
which is like a breastplate that holds this saddle pad forward and then the wrap, what we call a promise wrap on. And this front piece to hold the saddle pad forward also it's, it acts like our wrap, the figure eight wrap. Keeps, it, we don't have to tighten that girth in the beginning at all, but just enough to you know, keep things from sliding. But that front piece makes quite a difference in giving a horse a clearer sense of the boundaries and keeping it grounded and in, in, in its body. Ah, here you see kind of another close up. Both sides were leading. And of course, most of you don't have the, whoops, the uh, uh, advantage of having so many people like in a workshop. So if you can just have one person at the horse's head leading them, that makes a big difference. Now, this is one of the fun exercises. This is my sister, Robin Hood. And in a workshop like this, where we're starting young horses, people learn to drive and by feeling what it's like to be the horse and having signals from behind. And so the, the person in the green, she's the back legs of the horse and kind of Robin gives a signal. And then um, it's amazing how much feeling you get about this. And for those of you who've done it, um, I'm going to, when I finish this, I'm going to stop the screen share and I'm going to have some of you who've done it give a sense of what this is like to feel what it's like to be to be the horse in front and have those lines. So this is just more of the driving. And then we'll go on. Oops. Did I stop it? Yes. Just more of these experiences. Letting them stop and think and look around. That would have been before, you know, like probably on the third day. Now, this is where we use four lines. We don't just drive off the chest at first. You have, you have lines around the chest and you have lines to the halter. And I'll talk about that more. But those of you who are working at home, or if you're retraining a young a horse, not a young horse, retraining, just doing the chest piece with the person at the head brings the horse into a new sense of balance and into the body. It's, I'll, I'll talk to you about how I got there after. And this is just, uh, this is what I love. This is what, just hanging out with the horses. No halters on, they just, this is how we start with them. Let them just see us. Who are we? And like in some of these classes, I remember the last one that I was there. We just hung out with them and we'd start doing tea touch on these horses with no halters on from the beginning and getting them so you could do their manes, you could do the tea touch on their whole body. And they really liked being with us. I don't have it in this picture, but we have somewhere a horse actually lying down one of them and a couple of people just sitting with them and another one doing tea touch on the horse. That's a different way of starting young horses under saddle. And this is, we usually have, this is uh, Robin doing a demo on starting a foal without, instead of halter breaking, we halter train and get them used to being touched all over. It's totally different from imprinting. I think one of these days I'll do a Zoom session on that because we've had such success over that since the 60s. <clears throat> and this is one of the things like we often take also in that particular class, we'll take some other horses that are already in the, in the guests a string, but they have some issue. This horse had a really hard time. They had they couldn't pace for him, and so by putting this damp cloth, hooking it over the halter and uh, under the chin, you can handle the mouth in a different way. And it's amazing how 
easy it makes to handle a mouth. And that is in my book. And Pam, maybe we can write that in the, uh, I'm, I'm just going to show you this actually. <laughs> That's in, in this book, um, um, the ultimate horse behavior and training book that details of that, things like that are in there. So we go on. <laughs> oh yeah, this is, this is the person wrapped. And it's so interesting how that wrap just around your head helps you focus. Just sitting around on the porch, having a class. Sometimes we do it in the corral, sometimes, you know, before um, uh, we, every evening there, we had like these uh, hors d'oeuvres. It was really cool. <laughs> Peacocks all around. This is after uh, day four. We used to go riding in the mountains. That was really a fun thing for everyone to do. <laughs> Look at the surroundings we did. Just imagine being there. And, you know, it was interesting that Bitterroot Guest Ranch this year through all of COVID was full. Um, isn't that interesting? It's a way that people could come together and be safe and be out. So this is one of the exercises, dolphins flickering through the waves that we teach young horses to lunge. We don't just you know, chase them out at the end of the lunge line and let them run around. You teach them to listen to the voice commands and um, having them between two hands and first of all, going in a straight line. It's amazing how you can be successful with that. And then let's see, uh, this, is, this is how we start young horses by dropping the saddle pad and stopping and getting the horse to look back and sniff it. So if your saddle ever slips, if you ever have a problem like that, horses aren't spooky. They stop and wait for you. Just the first time mounting. It's just a couple more and then. And we always have someone at the horse's head. Now this is getting the rider reaches over and gets the horse to take a treat out of their hands. And um, by getting the horse to bend the head back in both directions, standing and keeping the feet still, you take the fear out of them. It's so interesting how that works. And of course you prepare the horse to have you be above you and bring that leg over. So we always have someone lead the first time out. And this is without a bit. We start horses in our Lindells. And that's actually, you know, working under saddle, working over things before we go out on the trail. Graduation. Oh, this is bringing them across the bridge because it's a rushing river under them. And sometimes that river is in flood. And that's, that's the graduating. Everybody leading quietly across one after the other, and then they get to turn out with herd. And if any of you want that experience, you can see, you can go to bitterrootranch.com and you won't get our, our, our touches there anymore. Oops, now I gotta stop this, stop the screen share. Now, before I go on, I'm just going to give you a chance um, to, um, Pam, do you, do you remember any just fun experience of being there? And I'm, I want to see, I'm going to see where. Um, I'd like to know, Jane, were you there ever at Bitterroot? Okay, so I want to hear you. Cindy, were you there? Great. I, I want to hear from your experiences of what it was like for you. Just the, the, the fact of ground driving a little bit. So... Pam, do you want to go first and then I'll do Jane and then Cindy and there and if any of the rest of you were there, I'd love to hear also your experiences, particularly with the aspect of ground driving and the fact that in seven days, we took those horses from being handled only a few times in their lives, like usually they were pulled in once a year and wormed and had their feet trimmed and um, 
getting them to go quietly. So Pam, do you want to just share when your feelings sure. about it? Yeah, can you hear me? Pam Beats. And Pam was in some of the very first, the very first training, certification training we did in the 80s. And I, I can't believe Marnie's not on here because Marnie would have been also in those first trainings in at Joder Arabian Ranch in Colorado. So Pam, Beats. Can you hear me? Your, your sound is not on. No, you have me muted. You have no sound? You have, you have me muted. Huh. What is going on? Okay, Pam, I James, can hear you. Do you have sound? Yeah, okay. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, I can't hear you. Have I, I just speak oh. up a little louder? I had you muted, you all. It increases the dog's intelligence. Well, I thought I, I thought I might have been on mute on your computer. Anyhow, hi everyone. You can everyone can hear. I I've got I still got the YouTube thing going in the background. Okay. And I can't, I've got to stop it. I'm sorry. Okay. Ah, moment. How am I going to do this? Oh, dear. <coughs> Techniques. How am I going to stop this? God. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully that's going to work. Ah, I don't know how to close this. Just a moment. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Oh, Phew. Pam. <laughs> okay. Are we good? You're good. Too. Yes. Pam okay. Uh, before I start, Marnie is here, so she's helping me do the book list. Um, okay. Great. Because I unfortunately don't have it. So, um, hi everyone. You know, Bitterroot was just one of the most fun clinics to do. Everything from the location, the food. Um, all everything like that. But one of the things I've always enjoyed is the working with people and driving people. It gives you such a different experience of what we tell our horses or don't tell our horses and how you feel if you don't understand. Um, and it gives you a chance to learn how to use the lines. Um, so I've always really enjoyed that part. And I think in general about Bitterroot and with the ground driving, there were always people, stuff on the railings, jackets flapping, buckets, um, horses driving, horses, you know, going over the um, confidence course. And it was always so quiet and, f and enjoyable and, and happy. You know, the horses were really enjoying themselves. And they, I think the horses really enjoyed ground driving. You know, it was, everything is so step by step and done individually for each horse so they understand it. Um, because we had to do that as people when we were driving. So it was really easy to transfer it over to the horses. Thank so you. That's what I remember. <laughs> Fantastic, thanks. Jane, another aspect that you bring away from those that time at Bitterroot. Well I had already had the experience of doing some of the ground driving in a couple of different clinics and in particular Carol and Pam teaching it very, very well doing the in-person driving. But I think the really interesting thing for me was that these are ranch horses. They do have a minimum amount of handling. And when we think of all of the so-called cowboy experience and how traumatic starting horses can be, that this was the least traumatic situation you could have ever had. Having these horses be together in their own herd and experiencing this and seeing how their friends are doing. Um, and, and really with no trauma, all of them get being sat on by the end of the week. And that's the goal. It should not be to stay on a bucking horse. It should be <laughs> not to have a horse buck. Yeah, exactly. And that, I mean, that's, that's, that is such a, a different uh, experience. Thanks. And um, just, and for those of you, I, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce Jane because Jane is another one of our very, very experienced horse trainers and has been using this work at, since exactly when, Jane, I have to remember what year you started. I, I think, I actually got my certification in 97. <laughs> my 
but yeah. I had started with the first article I ever read about you in 1981. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Man, we've been around a long time. Hi, Cindy. What year did you start, Cindy Pullen? Well, I had to laugh uh, when Jane talked about the first article she read. I found your very first book that you ever wrote of you in those funny, funny brown riding jumpers that uh, used to be out there and I still have it. So I started reading that, I think in the mid eighties, I think was when I found it. And, right. uh, and uh, I, I read more and so forth. I didn't, uh, I, I think it was probably 94 before I actually attended my first clinic and started <laughs> actually seeing this uh, magical work. And I had Arabs, we were raising my husband and I Arabs at the time. So we needed all kinds of quiet, slow, <laughs> easy uh, work with those. And uh, uh, that, that probably was one of the things that impressed me the most about Bitterroot. Uh, and I, I did go twice uh, uh, to the sessions. I couldn't get enough the first time, I had to go back. Uh, but was how quiet it was. And, and I don't mean quiet sound, I mean quiet energy, uh, the confidence that was built in those young horses and the uh, humans that were there. It was so slow and so easy, but so much got done. And <laughs> as, as Jane said, the very idea that you'd bring these youngsters in at the beginning of the week and by the end of the week, uh, most all of them were, were uh, mounted. And it, it, it's so easy to take that. It's a lot of information initially, but it's so easy to take that work back and do it at, at, at home. Because again, it's quiet, it's slow, it's relaxed. And the whole point is you're building trust and balance with the horses. So that those are the things that I brought back with me from Bitterroot that really impressed me. And, and they still impress me 20 some years later uh, <laughs> because they still apply. And, and I don't know why I continue to be surprised every time you have a foal and they just go right along with you and so forth. It's, it's just amazing work and it works all the time. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And it's so interesting. We are not doing those anymore. And uh, yeah. what I'm what I'm going, I'm going to do is starting a young horse or or going through the steps with your own horses. And I decided instead of doing these three day weekends that I've been doing, which I've loved 18 mm -hmm. hours, and we're going to start doing them um, like six hours a, a week, like six hours on the Saturday. And then that, that gives you time in between to actually go out and do it instead of just having that night to do it. So I'm, I'm excited that we have a chance, a way to continue it. Um, let's see, I, I saw, is there anyone else here? Tina or, or Lorraine Cookson, I'd love to have you just, just some experience about the ground driving that you, have. they're both in the UK and experience with ground driving that you would like to share with, because both of you have been doing this work for yeah, more than 20 years. Let's see where you are. Um, Lorraine, do you want to share? Um, uh, yeah. Can you hear? hear? Can you hear yeah. me? Hi, yes. Hi, hi. Um, well, I'd never come down the ranks of the British Horse Society or anything like that in the UK. I've never really seen uh, long reigning ever done nicely. So to do something like the ground driving for me, it was just such fun and such a great learning curve and just wonderful. And yeah, I, I thank you very much. It's, it was a great experience and I, I do, I do it lots, really enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Tina, Constance, another one of our very experienced instructors from the UK. Hi, sorry, I can't get my video to work, but I am here. Um, I absolutely love the chest line driving. It has to be one of my favourite things to do with horses because I just think it's so calm and it's just such a fun thing to do as well. All the horses, whatever age, just seem to respond so well to it. And 
it's something I always do with young horses to start them, but equally so it's something if I'm working with older horses that have had any problems with um, injury or that have had issues with the rider and things like that, it's, it's always one of my go-to exercises because it just makes such a change to them and mm -hmm. just allowing them to really find their own balance and not have anything constricting their head or anything in their mouth. And, and I think it really teaches their person about that lightness and not having to, because people still think that you have to be a strong person to stop a big horse. And it's just that lightest little touch on a line. Yeah. And even the thought sometimes of, of bringing them into a, a really perfect stand. Yeah. And yeah, it, it really helps them to think and to focus. Great, thank you. And I, I'll just do one more right now. Marnie's been doing it. And, uh, you know, one of the things, Lorraine, you said, you're used, you've never seen long rain driving uh, calm because, wow, I mean, God, when you watch it, what so often happens, the horses either come behind the bit or above the bit. And um, I've seen situations where the horses had to be stopped by running them into the fence. That's how you'd stop them. And, um, and there's nothing to, there's no experience of the horse having, oh, that's interesting experience. <laughs> Wasn't a nice experience for them. And that's why we do this step by step. And I'll explain after we hear from Marnie um, how I got to that point with the chest rate driving. It was up over many years. Marnie. Well, I kind of came the same way by, I'm going to say accident. As, as about a 12 year old, I was given a two year old coat to break. And it's a long story. But so before school, I would be out there in my bathrobe ground driving because she had not been ridden and this is how we were going to start and they showed me how to do it and it was with a bit and and nobody had taught her those steps that I mean I was supposed to and I'm a little you know I was not I didn't weigh very much at that time anyway I I you know and and so it was almost like brute strength and I finally realized and I would end up sometimes flat on the ground dragging along because I couldn't let her go where we were it, it, I mean, it was unbelievable. And, but I finally realized I, I tried the halter and that improved things immensely. I wouldn't have been able to chest drive probably. I wouldn't have come to me at that. But, um, and then, you know, we did several, a bunch of clinics with, it is amazing. But I was also gonna say on another thing, it's amazing with dogs. It's just yeah. polishing with dogs and, yeah. And, you know, just, well, I've never driven a cat. They probably wouldn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the kitties would be so happy with it, but it really works with dogs, with someone, of course, at their head. Thanks, Marnie. So one of the things that is fascinating, I was just talking to Marnie, who's in Texas, um, a few minutes ago before we started, and found out that she had the same book. She had had that same book by an American cavalry officer about ground driving. And that's what she was following. So, and we've never been able to find it. So I'm, I'm going to um, tell you how this driving started with me. I had the good fortune to uh, move to Edmonton or a, a, a farm just outside of Edmonton, Alberta when I was nine. And there was a riding stable a mile and a half from our farm. And I would ride to school in one direction, which is about a mile. And then, I mean, I was so lucky we had a stable there and there were only a, maybe five or six who rode. Um, and the, all the rest of the kids had to ride. For my first three years of my life, it was a good mile and a half, almost two miles. and. Um, so again, I was a kid who got a horse and was able to ride to school from the time I was six. So um, I, because I had written all those years, my riding instructor, the stable owner, 
Mrs. Alice Metherall was a wonderful horsewoman and her way was she didn't sack a horse out like you see in the West, but she did put them in the round pen, put a saddle on them and buck the horses out. And it was a small eight foot high round pen because there were horses who tried to, to, to um, climb the walls and get out. It's so interesting to think the terror that a horse must feel when you just slap a saddle, do the girth and get on. And sometimes some people tie up a front leg so they can't even buck as you know, they can't buck. So anyway, then after she would buck them out, then she would take the horse out of the round pen into the arena. And she would then, this was basically an English, it was hunter jumpers that we had and pleasure horses mostly, but she would ri ride a horse with a Western saddle and tie the horse, the horse that was just started under saddle to her saddle horn and put me, the kid, on the horse. And we'd go out at the walk, trot and canter in the big arena. <laughs> I always, I, I tend to say that I'm shorter than my sister Robin Hood because I was dumped on my head so many times, but actually that's a joke and it's actually not true. Um, those horses were rarely bucked after that, which is interesting. But the danger, of course, for those of you who started horses over the years by bucking, if something untoward happens, something unexpected happens, or your leg goes back too far and you touch the horse in the wrong way, or a horse jumps, you know, or slips or something, I can, I can remember this situation with one of our students saying that she'd broken her leg because her horse had slipped, young horse, only ridden a few times out, slipped on a rock. She, of course, her leg went back and the, scared the horse and she bucked and broke her leg. That doesn't happen when you go through the steps that we do. So anyway, how I got to ground driving, I've been doing that from the time I was like probably 10 for a couple of years. And one day I was riding home from the stable on my horse and this man on a cane walked down a long, long driveway and called to me and said he had a book he wanted me to see. And his property backed up to the stable property and he had could see the riding arena and the round pen. And he said that he had seen me go by rain or snow um, for, you know, all this time. Every day I went to after school. And um, he wanted me to have this book, and it was a book writ written by an American cavalry officer of how you could start a young horse by ground driving. And I took that home, and on our farm, we had um, a couple of horses boarded by friends of my parents. And uh, one was a like a two-and-a-half-year-old, 16-hand thoroughbred mare, lovely black mare, gentle and halter trained, but never had, never lunged, never had anything done to her. And I just took the book and followed step by step. Now, the caveat here is that mare could be brushed and groomed all over. You could handle her feet. And that's really important. And those are steps that we want to bring a horse to before you ever put a saddle on their back or even a lunge girth and tighten it. Get them now, of course, we've added all of the body work to it. So the horse is totally familiar with every part of the body. So anyway, I just followed the book and I remember I, and I ground over, of course, off the bit, and I put the saddle on, and I, I shortened the stirrups and ran the lines through the stirrups, but I, she was never afraid, and I used voice commands because I followed the classical way of lunging, which you lunge a horse using the voice commands, and she knew how to walk and trot. I didn't canter her on the lunge, but on the ground, I could drive her around, stop her, not a problem. And I remember I got on her back and probably spent the first months just walking because in those days we did it really slowly. And, um, and then could trot and canter her, never had an issue. And that's what I came away with. This is a way of starting horses so they're never afraid. Um, our whole concept is, and, and I grew up, with parents and grandparents who really loved animals and 
did not come from a place of thinking you had to be the boss or be the alpha. This alpha thing, y'all, this is a new thing that has only started in about the last 40 years. You didn't hear that before. So um, I want to now see if I can screen share again. I want to, I'm going to show you the next steps that we took. And well, how do I do this? Okay, screen share. Oops, just one second here. You can, here we go. Go to my iPhotos and I'm going to share, here we go. my Zoom ground driving. So this was, okay. This is a Hungarian horse, Graflo. And he was six years old at this point. He came down, this was at our Pacific Coast School of Horsemanship in Los Osos, California, just up the mountain from Visalia, California, between you know Los Angeles and Sacramento. And this horse had been haltered, trimmed, was gentled. You could, when I got him, you, you never had a blanket on. So I started, you know, with blankets and stuff. And before I ever ground drove him or did anything, he was, I, I just made friends with him. And this is sitting on this horse which is a funny thing to do. I don't know that I do this today. <laughs> Interesting, but he was a funny horse and I had to be really careful because I had several of the Hungarian horses in training. And if I did not take him out first, he would try to punish me. Now, this is before we ever did T-touch because that wouldn't happen now. When we do the T-touch work on a horse, it it develops a connection, a cell-to-cell, heart-to-heart connection that we didn't have yet in these horses. But I, so I had to take him out first and I'd love to know if any of you have ever had that experience of horses being jealous. I think, Jane, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, and it's, it's so funny. So anyway, now I just have to, oh, golly, how do I do this? I probably shouldn't have made the pictures big. Oh, Okay, I have to figure out how to get back. How do I do this? Yes, good, okay. So then this next picture is I'd gone through in the corral, the ground driving with the horse, just driving off the bit. Um, you know, we weren't, I was not nearly sophisticated. And I had a situation where I had to run the horse into the fence once because I didn't go through the steps ago now. But this is after I'd started him about a month. And this is taking him outside. And I used a Western saddle to start from, even though we rode primarily English, because it's way easier on the horse's back, in my experience. And this is just outside, first time mounting, We're doing photographs with this. And then this is like, like ground driving over a ditch. Let's see if I can make, yeah. Um, outside the property. And you see, this is the problem. He's got a bit in his mouth. So of course, there's a problem in his mouth when he jumps, even though I've driven horses quite a bit. And you'll see later, I really changed that and we started using a halter. So, I'm trying to get back here. Cooperate, please. My escape does not always cooperate with me. Now, as, I, as I'm taking a little time to do this, just imagine with your horses that you can do some of these steps. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now, just we go. This is then riding him over the ditch. He didn't just stay in a round pan or stay in a paddock. He took the horses out. And this is then 
the next, and so that, that we did that for years and we did it very successfully. Now, skip, that was 1966, uh, that picture. And this is 2019. And this is with my, sis, my niece, Mandy Pretty. And this is how we start Young Horses Now. Now I'm going to tell you how we got to this chest rein driving. And this is all already driving with two sets of reins. And of course, for those of you who say, wait a minute, how can I drive my horse just off the chest alone? You can't. You need somebody at the horse's head. Why do we do it just starting with this line, braided line around the chest. Why do we do that? Um, because it gives them a sense of their body. You get them over being afraid of anything from behind. If something comes up behind the horse, it's the cheapest insurance you can get for the horse. Because if they have been driven behind the way we do it and at stopping and then walking up and standing beside the girth area and having the horse turn the head back to you to take a little hay out of your hand. In the process of keeping the feet still, it's very different from this idea of getting the, the swing around, you know, to move away from you. It's the opposite. We want the horse grounded and feeling confident and responding to a signal, not to a poke. And um, by getting them to bend the horse, the head back, there's a level of confidence that happens like nothing else. So I was in a clinic in California in the 80s and somebody brought a horse that they had sent out for training about, it had been out for months. And when the horse was in Europe, very high headed, very unit. And um, when he came into the clinic, he, they had a hard time getting him into, out of the arena gate, because it was narrow. We went, we we're going through this, not the big barn door, but the narrow gate, he, he wouldn't go through. And he was really claustrophobic. He was also claustrophobic going into the stall. So if you just drive him, and by that time, I was already driving off the, off the halter, not, not the... Um, <laughs> Not, uh, uh, not the bit since years. Um, and what he would do would bolt through. So I thought, wait a minute, how do I bring this horse into his body? So I just, at that time, I can't remember how we did it, but we just put something around the neck and attached the lines to it and then had a person at the horse's head giving them confidence. And of course, now we go through into years. We went through steps making the horse sure the horse is not afraid of the lines. Uh, I wish you all, I wish I had videos of, oh my God, the way I did it when I used to, to do a training in Germany in the 80s of starting a young horses uh, took a month. People came for a whole month course and we would take three-year-olds and I never started two-year-olds. I took three-year-olds and... Um, and went through a month. And at that time, we used to, I used to let them get over the fear by driving, by allowing the lines to dry, grow, 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 drag on the ground, but they're always afraid at first. And so I thought, this is not logical. Why do I set up a situation that creates fear? And that's why, you know, we started going more and more steps and it only takes a few steps and so the horse has no fear of being touched anywhere on the hind legs or around the hind legs. It's a really safe insurance. So say you're riding a young horse out and you know, a dog runs under them or, or you got a kid in a carriage around them. It's just for safety. Anyway, um, what happened with that horse, we could get him over claustrophobia by giving the boundaries of the line on the chest. His neck wasn't up with a U neck. He wasn't being pulled. And um, in a week long training, the horse completely changed. And so over the years now, for those who have been to the earlier courses, we tied the lines to something around the neck. And in a training in Italy about six years ago, 
I, um, oh my God, we had a six-year-old jumper that was there from a professional rider and he was a very serious kicker. I mean, he was a really dangerous kicker. So we took him in the training and of course we do all the work to get him over that, working the tail and doing all this stuff. And he was no longer he thought about kicking, but we had always worked several horses in the arena at one time because horses are way happier. And if you're home, of course, you don't have a course. So take another horse into the arena and just tie it there or let it be free if they're friends. So the horses have company. So they just feel so much better. And um, so anyway, what happened with that horse and where we started changing how we attach these ropes? <laughs> um, something happened. There were several people around the horse and we're talking really in this class some really experienced horse people. These were, you know, worked with a lot of horses. Well, something happened that spooked the horse and he got loose and he had the, lines tied around the neck and he's running around this really big indoor arena and we've got all these horses in here and all the people in the arena and you cannot stop a horse running like that it is simply not safe and oh, that was the last time we ever because he hadn't been he hadn't been actually driven in there yet you know he'd just been in preparation that's the last time we stopped attaching those lines solidly so now what we do we weave that rope around the neck it's the safest way to do it and then you a tight weave and so you just put the weave the driving line through that and um i'll show you up close here then if anything happens, you just pull that line off. And always what we're doing is like getting the step safer and safer and safer. So no matter what happens, you are not gonna be in trouble. I was able to do it. Now, by the way, this book is um, my latest book and it's written with my brilliant niece, Mandy Pretty. And in here, are these steps to do this step by step. Um, so I want to um, go, and we'll take questions at the end. I'm going to go now and show you uh, just a series of a uh, uh, young horse. Where is he? Mm -mm -mm. Italy, ah, here, Paratet. Now, this is, this is taking a, a horse that had a problem. We only took, I think in those, I think we took four horses in a three-day training. And we would, I would work with them an hour a day. And then one of our really great uh, practi uh, practitioners would take the horse for another hour in the stable with um, the owner to teach them how to do the work on the body. So this issue with this horse was he's a 10 year old Arabian stallion that this rider had um, bought the horse. He'd only had him about a year and the owner had died. And the thing about the horse is that See if I can get this. He, only, he had two issues that we worked on that weekend. One is that he only had one gate down the road. The rider, really nice guy, could not slow him down. And he would, he would just really, just this absolutely really fast trot. He never ran, never galloped, but he couldn't rate the horse. I want you to notice the U neck here. And what you can't see is that this bit was in the mouth and it was loose and it was banging. And I think the horse, just from the movement of the bit in the mouth, tended to go faster. And also, as soon as you take a hold of that bit up, I think just trying to keep the bit from flapping he was ewing his neck. Now, what's, why is that a problem? And I have to tell you, I mean, I get the privilege of working with really top people all over the world. 
And nobody understands that I've ever met that this you neck has to be changed because the breathing is, is um, inhibited when, and the back is tight and the horse can't feel their hindquarters in the same way. So this is what we did. I'm going to just show you these steps and then show you the simple ground driving that we did with him only once. And you'll see the change in this horse. Now, the other thing, the other issue is they couldn't bridle him without taking the bridle apart completely. So here he is. We just have this. This is one of our Zephyr leads that we run through the side ring and up to the top ring. And we don't use rope halters um, because you, you just don't have the nuances, the, the fine details of working with them. So I've got my hand on this horse's neck here. See if I can move there. This is rock hard, just rock hard. And that has to change in order to be able to rate the horse and be able to bridle him. I'm pressing my escape button. Be nice to me. How many times do I have to press you before you do this? Sorry, I uh, I didn't have any help putting this in a like a slideshow that it'd be easier. Oh, come on, please. You who computer, give me. <laughs> Now, the thing is, what I want you to notice, by the way, while I'm, I'm tapping this, this horse has a slight dish face and a slight little moose nose here. And that slight and flat between, uh, between the eyes, which is a really good thing. So he was really smart. Look at this really big eye. And of course, quite bigger than really wide open because he was concerned. But that slight dish makes him really sensitive. And this nice little bump here, like a bit of a moose nose here. It gives him a really strong uh, character. Lovely muzzle, just lovely soft lips here, flat chin. This is really an intelligent horse. And I loved working with him and oops. Oh, I'm just having trouble. Oh, God darn it. My, I don't know how to escape out of here. Shoot, I'm going to have to keep the pictures smaller next time. Oh, Linda, come on. How do I, how do I do this? Maybe I can, uh -huh. okay, maybe I have it now. I can advance them this way. Okay. Now, what we had to do, these are, these are steps before you ground drive. Ground driving, chest driving was just one of them. We had this, this band around his uh, um, barrel that is a heart rate monitor. And the, the, we had auditors there and the auditors could see the heart rate of this horse just from being handled. Now you notice we have a person on each side that gives him boundaries from both sides. Now, when you don't have that opportunity, because most of you won't, if you can even do this alone, it just takes longer. Now I'm asking him to bring his back up because in order to release, I don't know if you can see my cursor, this gullet is already loose and you have to loosen that in order to get the horse to be able to breathe and think, and I do it by bringing the back up. Now I want to be able to take my hand, my right hand on the halter and the left hand behind the horses uh, on the pole here, just behind the pole and ask him to be able to lower the head which he could already do in the first session. And you all, it's not by running him around or tiring him out or getting him to, you know, give in to me. It's by gaining his trust and feeling. We want him to enjoy being with us. Now I can actually put my hand on his pole. Look where my left hand is on the halter. And I have a chain on him here through the side ring up the side of the halter. We have the chain for the weight. Now, when you go to one of my sister Robin's classes, and by the way, I forgot to say to you, you can 
I'm not doing starting young horse classes anymore, but she is at their beautiful facility in Vernon, uh, in, uh, 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 British Columbia. You can go through these steps and they do the, at least one a year, Mandy and Robin. But see, just by getting that trust and that second T in T-Touch, that stands for trust. And just getting the horse so that ah, you can put your hand there and then do a nice slide on the forelock. That's necessary. And, and this is the other end. And you think, really? Okay, you go from the front to the back because the fear comes from behind. And this tightness, you can see right there is a little bit of tightness there. And just getting the horse so I can take my fingers and go under with little circles under the tail. Now, the T-touch the that we added in the 19, what year? 83, after 83, that made a huge difference. Now, why is this important? I'm going to tell you something that's really interesting. For those that you see where people are pulling the tail hard, really hard, um, we do it really gently because there is a series here, a connection between the horse's vertebra and the tail. It's called the cauda equina. And they're nerve fibers where the tail ends on the spinal cord and where the hairs come out. And it's just before the, 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 the tail hairs connect. And this very, if you do something really hard on this, I think you take the chance of hurting. And this idea, you know, this old thing that you saw if you wanted to hold a foal by taking the tail above you know, uh, up hard in the air if you understand those nerve fibers I bet you wouldn't do that so we just give the horse a sense of the circles under the tail and a gentle pull and getting the horse's head free so they can turn back and look at you I don't want them in cross eyes I want them so they can turn back and get that trust. This is the hind leg exercises. Listen, you all, when we I first picked this horse's hoof up, holy mackerel, he could only do a tiny, tiny circle because the muscles in his body were just so tight everywhere. And this, and so we do tiny, tiny circles. That's the bait, that is the influence of the incredible Feldenkrais work. You don't force it. Now, here is where we start the chest driving. And this was essential to getting this horse connected. Now he's already got his tail up and I'm stroking him with the wand, with the rope tied around the wand. And I hear we didn't have the braid to show you. And I think I have another picture I have to show you with that, uh, how we, we braid this rope around the neck so you can run this through. Now, on this horse, he's not afraid of people. It's just head shy and too fast. So we can afford to tie this line, attach the line. It's just on the horses that are really afraid or spooky that I would not attach them. So by stroking him and getting him used to these lines, first on one side, and then Notice we've got a person on each side with loose lines and he's listening. He's just standing there quietly. But notice his tie, his tail is down. He's a little uncertain as I stroke down the thigh with the lines. Uh, with the wand, sorry. Now I go to the other side and I only do one side at a time. And if any of you have seen the disasters that can happen with young horses being long line the first time when they just horse isn't used to it they just attach it to the bit and then put the lines on and you can have a real disaster with it so look at he's not certain here is he you can look at it but he's he can see me so his head is enough that he can see me and i'm just taking this line up the sides quietly and if he were to move, we have to go back and do the work so he doesn't feel like he has to move. Now this is another step. Instead of just letting the line 
go straight down. We cross them over. So he gets used to moving as those, the left line is touching his thigh. And now you see both lines are dependent. And I don't want the horse pulling. He's a little fast. Can you see the little concern? But that neck because they there are both sides, not not you. And this is this is on the third day. I can just from the work we've done with the a total of two hours a day. At that point, he had had a total of four hours of the work, and I can put the the Lindell on him without him just even just standing here. Now I got on him and look at the difference. See how this neck is off? He doesn't have a bit in his mouth. I have a balance rein on him, which works on these muscles that affect the seeking reflection. It encourages them to go down. And I'm touching him behind. And look at his tail when I went in behind. He's just like, oh, oh, what are we going to do today? What are we doing to do that? And this is showing picking the balance rein up. As it, this is different from the liberty rein. And look at the look on the horse's face. He is engaged. He is interested. And this is just standing in front of the group doing a heart hug, leaving the auditors to get this auditors, leading them to the heart hug. And then having the rider ride him. You can now race him with the balance rein. He's going down the road with a nice, different soft neck. Look at his tail is up. He's riding along. He was a very different horse. That's a total of six, six hours in three days. Now, of course, when you're home alone, you're going to have to do a lot more than that, um, obviously because we don't have the energy of the knowing what we're doing with these steps and how it can affect the horse because what you think has a huge um, effect on your horse. So when you know these steps, it makes a big difference. Now, yeah. um, I would like to just know, I'm going to stop screen sharing here a moment and see if there are any questions. And if you, down at the bottom, you see at the bottom next to screen share, there shows that little thing reactions. Click on that and you'll see you can put your hand up. It says raise hand. If you would like to make a comment or a question, and I want you all to know there are no, there's no such a thing in our work, in our Tellington world as a dumb question. Um, any questions and uh, any skepticism? We love it because I wouldn't believe this stuff would work if you hadn't seen it. Cheryl, Rao, I see you. You can unmute yourself, please. Okay, thank you. This is really great. Um, I I have it in the chat, but I've been learning um, ground driving or actually long reining with a bridle and a bit, and I want to get away from that and do it more your way. And I. You know, I'm, I'm learning through the course of your um, your webinar here or Zoom call here that um, those steps are in your book, which is great. I do have the book. I need to <laughs> obviously go look at that. But making that transition from, um, you know, using the bit to not using it, um, I'm just wondering what tips and suggestions you might have and actually like literally where to attach the, the lines to. Uh, you mean when you attach to the head? Well, uh, would I actually start with the chest and have someone at the head or would you use a yeah. halter? Anyway. When, when you have someone at the head, use a halter. Okay. Lead with the halter. And we lead with the line with a the line over in the side ring, once over the nose band and up to the other side. And just so it's not uh, under the chin, you don't. And it's not, it's not just on that rope, um, I'm sorry, on the ring under the chin. And you'll okay. see that in the book. You'll see all of that in the book. Um, and of course, you have to understand, you cannot ground drive 
alone without some at the head off the chest. So the next step would be to add the four lines. That's a little daunting. So if you haven't had a chance to practice, after you've done the chest driving with one person at the head, just to stroke the horse, get, guide them, give them confidence, then you can put, and we don't, and st I, I started off, you know, using fancy driving lines or the lunge lines. They're too heavy. I mean, if you, you'd be amazed. So I like personally, um, I like a climbing rope that is, um, I like a, what is it? Oh my God, now I've been, I've been in lockdown so long. I don't even know. What do we use? Uh, nine, nine millimeter. Nine millimeter for the chest and the seven millimeter for the head because they're lighter. And so you have enough in your hand and you don't need much, but you don't want heavy lines off the head. And you just, I would, if you have somebody with you, ideal at the head, then just attach to a halter on the side rings of the halter and drive that way and use your voice commands, you know, so you get the horse to and walk and halt. And I use these long voice commands and I always use the and because that's giving the horse warning, something's coming, and then the next. So I hope that, and if you're, you know, if you can get to my, a course with my sister, it'll be really great in Vernon, British Columbia. You, I'm, I'm going to do one next year. Well, actually I will bring this in to the course that I'm going to be doing on the last two Saturdays of January and the second Saturday of February. We're going to do six hours a day and go through all of these. Um, tea touches with whatever somebody brings which what they want with their horse right. so does that answer your question does that get yes you more? thank right. you yes that was very helpful thanks yeah and also i really recommend that you go online to um we have now available to help you besides the books you can go to learn.ttouch.ca for canada and you can get um a basis of the of the work just to start you on some of the basics of the tea touch and so forth. Thanks. Um, okay, thank and you. Maybe Pam, you can write those that in there or, or um, Marnie. Alex, Alexandra. Yes. Would you like to unmute yourself and then Beth? Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so um, actually the first question already answered some of it in terms of the heaviness of the lines because um, I'm in Germany here right now and I'm um, just kind of timeshare a horse, but they're both studs and um, they've complete, they are actually completely trained. And, but one came from Spain and he's still a little nifty. Um, we got that pretty much, um, it's better. So but wait, I didn't understand the word you use. He's a little what? He's a, he's still a little like you know he's an eight year old stud, so he we were careful with him, and he's not my horse. We um, I kind of timeshare him so to speak, and um, he is trained um, even in high dressage and he does well. It's just the environment is new, and I'm trying to, um, and he's already better. Um, and so when you say better, like what, what are some of the, what are some of the, what, what are, what are the, some of the things that are better? Get some... um, that he was very head shy because they had, they had him in the Spanish uh, hecamore that's very hot on the nose. And we already figured it's like the girls figured that that was hurting him. So now they have him um, in a normal bridle, but with a bit and we actually have to work on a place outside. So there's no like in encasement or anything like that. Right. So it's, I don't know if it would ever be safe to take away the bit. Well, only with someone at his head. Yeah. You no, know, and that, I mean that, so you have to, safety is number one, of yeah. course. So whatever you, and if you have light lines. Yeah. You know, and have them, what I would do either run them through a surcingle like we have in some of those pictures, or you can 
put your stirrups up and run a straight line from the chest through the stirrups with the saddle. And yeah. sometimes a saddle on a horse is useful because they're used to be listening then, you know, they're yeah. more aware. So that's what, uh, just number one, be safe. Yeah. Well, I also want to share with you is like the T-touch really works because um, after a few uh, times of that, they, they weren't head shy anymore. It was just the heck of more. And I had that, um, I trained some horses in Mexico and it was the same thing. They completely don't believe in that. They think I'm crazy. But um, I teach, taught, T-touched some falls and I, I only had your book. I didn't have any videos back then. I got some later and it, they really were so, uh, th such a big difference. You know, they wouldn't bite. The stallions, yeah. they never could, couldn't understand why the stallions wouldn't bite me. They said, you're a woman, you have to, you can't dominate them. I wouldn't tie them. I would just brush them like this. And it really, it really works. Yeah. It's beautiful. I yeah. mean, isn't it, isn't it so, uh, this whole con common thinking is that you have to dominate the stallion or they're going to take advantage of you. Just not true. Well, I tried and I didn't, I couldn't pull it off, you know, but then I had to, add, I had to find my own way. And then I remember T-Touch and it's, it's like, they liked it. Yeah. <laughs> my punishment was when they were a little naughty, I would just walk away. Yeah. You know, Interesting. I would just walk away and I'd come back later with me. The carrots walked away with me. And that was, if there was like a punishment necessary, it's like I would walk away. I had to do that once or twice and you know it's like oh I actually like her there so I'm gonna be. that's really beautiful of yeah. Alexander you know what's interesting the carrot with the stallion really works because yeah. it gives them something in their mouth and when they chew they activate the parasympathetic and it's when they're afraid or biting it's like they're in a place of fear and it's a sympathetic nervous system activated fight flight you know faint fool around yes or freeze it's all part of the sympathetic so beautiful how nice i, I would love it if you would write us something about how you or send some pictures oh yeah i can do that yeah to to your facebook page or um if you could send it to linda at t touch or info at t touch.com that would be okay. great okay. and just say that i asked you for them okay Okay. Great. Thanks. Great. So um, let's see. Um, Beth. And then Lisa. Hi, Linda. Thank you so much for this. And I just want to thank you in general for being amazing. I've learned so much from you over the years. And I, I have all my students do heart hugs with themselves and their horses. And it's just, it's such a beautiful thing. Uh, so thank you for, for just being you. And um, I just wanted to just briefly ask I have a pony who had been trained to drive with a buggy and so I just did some ground driving with him first with the bit because that's what he knew and then I switched to a cabazon with the rings so what would be the benefit for him like he's pretty solid and, and relaxed what would be the benefit of switching then to the to the test with someone leading him um just to give him something different and interesting to do okay you know, it's because he's used to doing that. And it's it's simply, I think sometimes doing something unexpected with a horse who's perfect and everything that they do gives them another way of relating to you. Okay, I love it. You know, and it might be fun for him. Cool, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Lisa. Hello. Um, you know, I was so excited when I saw that you were going to do this um, this today because it it just came to me as so as so perfectly in timing. Um, I imported um, an Icelandic gelding. Um, he's been in the states now for a year, and what was happening um, when I started riding, he would trip or stumble behind. And so, and then he would put in like a little bolt, which was just, I, I was thinking this is um, a, a fear reaction or a pain reaction. And so uh, my first thought was possibly a saddle issue. And, um, and so I went through that whole thing for like a year now. Um, 
And I did, I tried um, the bit, the side pull, all these things. And it was, all these things were, so, the tripping was still happening. And so finally I was just in a clinic, um, an Icelandic clinic in um, um, more or less Denver um, this September. And all the people that actually got the horse for me said, oh, well, it's probably a stifle thing. And I was oh. like, uh, stifle? Oh, so, right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, so then all these things came together and I thought, okay, now I'm doing all this groundwork to get him secure because now if anything happens, he just goes flying forward. Um, you know, um, I'll just be walking him and all of a sudden he's like going and I'm like, um, you know, he's almost like a kite. And then I, he looks at me and I'm like, okay. So we're back to square one, and, but we have a good relationship, but, and I have tried the body wrap and I, and I was like, Hmm, I think that this actually made a difference. And so I'm convinced this is the total way to go to get him aware of his body using his body correctly. And I have all your books and all everything and done you know lots of clinics and we've met um you know in it's your um celebration <laughs> so hey. i i'm just like i it's so funny how you always go back to the tea touch or in the tea train uh tea touch training and, or however the new words are for it but so let me ask you a couple of things mm -hmm. um so when um i i'd love to see some pictures because First of all, I think you're, you're spot on. When he's knuckling behind uh -huh. and bolting, that's pain. Uh -huh. And, and it, surprise him, it surprises him. You know, it's, a, yeah. it's like a shock. So one of the things to do is um, have you ground driven him? No. And so this is, this will be a learning session for me. And, um, Long story short, I'm going to possibly be learning some driving techniques because I'm volunteering for a hippo therapy program. And uh, one of my horses they think might be helpful um, because of his different movements since he's also in Icelandic. So I guess there's a lot of learning to do ground driving and things. And I will, you know, put this out, um, this technique, not that I know it, but I would like to, um, incorporate it, learn, you know, do better, um, maybe have a person that can help me. Um, where are you? In, in Colorado. But where? Oh, in uh, Buena Vista. So I am, uh, what am I? Southwest of Colorado Springs. Oh, South. Mm -hmm. You're a long way from Pam, because Pam Beats is in uh, Denver. Um, oh. Yeah, it's a it's about two hours, right? Or more, depending. But it's possible that Pam comes down there. And what I recommend is that you take the book and go step by step because mm -hmm. it's my experience that you can get them over that bolting when something scares them by mm -hmm. by the step by steps, starting with someone at his head with the chest driving, you know. Mm -hmm. Got to, oh, I've got to plug in my computer. How Lisa? Much, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I will, I will message you my email. And if you want to contact me, please do. Okay. Yeah. Cause um, you know, he, he's so sweet and I knew, I just knew, I knew there was something, you know, and, and then when it all came together in my mind, I was like, and my vet looked at him two weeks ago and she's like, oh yeah, Lisa, that right you know, that right stifle, which is what I said. He like would either dig the toe on the right hind or he just would like trip with the right hind right. and then it would be the, you know, right. and but that, I've seen it before and I believe you can get him over it. And the mm -hmm. other thing to do, like with start with a chest driving mm -hmm. and someone at the head. And then when you run, once you get him really used to all of that and having mm -hmm. fun going to the labyrinth, doing stuff with yeah. it, um, just to get used to the things behind. It's not like you drive him through the labyrinth. I mean, you, yeah. you give him a little <laughs> signal 
and but they get used to things around them and the other thing is when you ride him are you riding with a balance rein um no i don't think i ever tried the balance rein well the no. point is if something you know if he starts to knuckle you give him that signal on the chest with the balance rein and he stays in the body instead of bolting when oh. he's been chest driven okay yeah i'm so excited to learn this because um i knew there had to be a good way to get his body connected because yeah. it's so obvious now that there he you know that's his whole reaction it's like oh uh, something's going to kill me because this hurt me and now i'm going to run away and then uh it's dangerous you know i mean that that's Very dangerous, dangerous. Yeah. and and the point is it's just a reaction you know i don't <laughs> think it's a thought something's going to kill me it's a it's a reaction <laughs> yeah and mm -hmm you know, the flight. So, yeah. with, and I'd love it if you would, you know, stay in touch. And this is mm -hmm. the kind of thing, I, are you by any chance a, a member of our Tellington T-Touch community? Because well, that I be thought so I, I thought I have been, and maybe I, I need to go back over this and get in contact, uh, uh, go online and, and check. And I will talk further with Pam. It's Pam, right? Pam, yeah. I think that, yeah. and, uh, yeah, I would like to pursue this with with that, and um, and I was yeah. taking notes here, so um, mm -hmm. oh, and those tips are, somebody has oh can figure out how to mute everybody else. Um, so um, the thing is, the community. If you all want to join the community, if you're not, uh -huh. it, uh -huh. it's www dot ch and there's no com and and then you go in and it's 9.99 a month uh -huh. and, um and then you you know can share and get questions and in the library there's which is there's a facebook part and then there's the library part and in the library there are so many of my webinars and over the uh -huh. year different videos and stuff so and it would just yeah. be great to to share with a group of people who, you know, believe in working with horses in the way that they enjoy it as much as we do enjoy being with them. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is fabulous. The um, heart hugs. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dee Ainsworth, where are you from? Hi. Hi. Is it okay that I don't have video? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm from Ontario and um, I've done some trainings with Robin and um, Edie Jane. But be, for health, health reasons, I wasn't able to continue, unfortunately. But right now, um, I've got permission from someone close to me that I'm helping to do some work with. So this is a person. He seems to relate to the horse work. I've showed him some of the the um, clips that you showed in this um, webinar, and he he seems to connect with the horse work and the energy that he said he was watching this this webinar and he really connected to the energy. So he's he's been he's been to physiotherapy and he has exercises. He needs to have body awareness. So this is a human. We're work trying to work on body awareness calmness confidence and and how to get back and doing the physiotherapy exercises more regularly so any input would be I'm great just, you're not talking about horses right no but oh. the principles for the horses seem to really work for him well i suggest that he look at our work for people right right now in in the um, in the um, library, there is a two and a half hours of the basics of T touch for for humans and how okay. to do them and the studies that are behind them, and that I I really recommend that you take a look at that because okay um, yes we just have had such wonderful and if any if you're interested every Tuesday I do something it's called 
uh, live with Linda and friends on every Tuesday um, from uh, what time is it? 11 a.m. Pacific Coast time. And, um, and it might be, you know, useful for you. Okay. Say, yes, with the tea touch. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. I think that's, Pam, is that all the questions we have? I'm, I'm not sure. Because um, I'm seeing one line. If no. we help. Uh, I'm going to, Liz Lane wanted to know if there's anyone in the UK. And oh, I absolutely. Think, yes. Yeah, for starting <laughs> the young uh, course. Yes, definitely. Tina, okay. who, who is here, uh, are you, I, I can't, I can't get off my chat here to see the full side. I can't go down to see if you're still here. Tina, if you want to come on, um, who's been on with is, is Tina Constance, who's, and um, Lorraine Kustin, and they do workshops in the UK and they work with individuals. Now we have a big presence in the UK since many, many years. Um, I, I cannot understand how I stopped this participant list. Eh, bummer. Can, did you read all the messages? If you could read them, Pam, I, I don't wanna. Yeah, I don't see either of them still on. Oh, darn. Okay, so yeah, I can see Yeah, it's late there. Um, I'm, I'm Ruth, Ruth, Ruth here. I do. I do work with horses as well. In oh, the UK. you're here too. Oh, great. Yeah. Sorry, Linda, I was late getting on problems with my own horses, but never mind. Uh, whereabouts is the lady in the UK? Did she say? D, where are you? Um, it's me. I'm up in Northwest Wales. Thank you. Oh right, well I'm in um, I'm in um, West Wales. So if you want to give me a message, then I can either find help you or find somebody who can help you. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Uh, so that's Liz. Was okay. That's. Um, is there anyone else who has any other questions? And I'm just going to end with leading you through a heart hug, as long as we make sure that we, um, uh, okay, looks like not. I don't know why I can't skip down. Oh, I know why. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm just going to check down. I see Lorraine is still here, Cookson. She's in the UK. Uh, Sandy Art, oh, what a pleasure to see you. Um, just Renee is here, another one of our wonderful teachers, and um, looking, going all the way down. Okay, I'm to the bottom. So it looks like we don't have any more comments or questions. So I would, um, it's been a pleasure being with you, and I'm going to lead you through a heart talk. And for those of you who are not acquainted with it, before you go to work with your horses, doing a heart hug can put you in a state of what's called heart coherence. And it's been shown that when you're in this state, horses want to be with you. It was just like the concept that I think it was Alexandra said when she when she's with her horses, not from the place of being in command, but being with them. They do want to be with you. Now, the idea of the heart hug is to put one hand over the other in the center of your chest, which is actually your heart chakra. It's not where your heart is, but it's your heart chakra. And I'm going to add in, we're going to imagine on the wall, and I'll tell you why in a minute, we're going to imagine the face of a clock, you know, the old kind of fashion kind of clocks that have numbers all the way around the clock and the hands. And you imagine taking that clock with the numbers on it and you place it on your chest. So you're looking at it from the outside. And the reason that we do that, when we imagine the face of a clock, we activate our right brain. Why is that important? Because the right brain is responsible for activating our feeling. And in this time of COVID, we really need that. 
it's also responsible for our creativity, for our compassion, for our caring, and for our intuition. Just having that connection to all that is through intuitively. Now, why the clock with the numbers on it? Because when we do have anything to do with numbers, that activates the left logical side of the brain. And in order to do all the things we do and be here together on, <laughs> on Zoom, we have to have that logic. And so it's the weaving of the logic and the right brain and left brain that is so effective with being with our horses. So now you imagine this on this clock, looking from the outside, six is toward the ground and it's a really small clock because you're just going to do a very small, tiny movement. Six is toward the ground, nine toward the right shoulder, 12 toward the chin, and three over to the left shoulder. And however you can comfortably put your hands there, you might fold one over and just move the two hands together because it's like a hug. <laughs> and so the tiny, tiny little circle, we're going to go first to the right, moving the skin as lightly as you can with as least connection as possible. From six, a little curve up to nine. Nice deep breath, curve up to 12, down to three, six, and up to nine. Smile at the thought of your horses. And take a nice breath. Now like a gain, go. Do it again. Now try the other connect side. <laughs> Some of you will prefer going to the left and really make sure you do a curve up to the six and a curve up to three. Deep breath into the nose. 12, nine, six, and up to three. And now for me, my body doesn't like that so much. It doesn't feel as good. It's whatever feels best. And it may not make a bit of difference to you. So let's do another in the direction you prefer. Breath in and out and stop at the nine or the three. And really think of something for which you are very grateful with a smile. Try it once again in your preferred direction with a smile. Deep breath into the nose and I like to breathe out through gently pursed lips. Now, if you just do that like three or four times outside of the stall before you start or outside of the paddock or pasture, before you start working with your horse, it grounds you, it connects you, it brings you into what's called heart coherence. And it takes you away from the control of the sympathetic nervous system, the fight, flight, freeze, faint, fool around, the primitive part of our brain, which is really necessary for us. But, and it activates the forebrain, which puts you in the parasympathetic. And ah, just a few of these, and it will make you in a whole other uh, feeling, conception, you know, being, state of being, and your horse will feel that. Whenever you feel stressed or, oh my gosh, you've got those looping thoughts that you cannot get out of your head. Just two or three of these heart hugs. And I really invite you to, if you want to be in a community of people who really you know, believe that, you know, we want our animals, no matter what they are, to have as much pleasure out of the connection with us as we have with them a very different state of being with our animals. Join us in the T-Touch community. It's again, I think you'll find it in there. I hope it's ttou.ph. And mute everybody and I have to do that. Bummer. Pam, can you see how to mute people? Somebody's got their line open and they don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's all smile, enjoy the time together. I appreciate this opportunity to share this with you. 
And if you're interested, consider joining me either as an auditor um, from the last uh, two weekends of January and the second weekend of February, or you can bring a horse. And to do that, you go to sign in. You go to um, learn.ttouch.ca. And as part of that course, you get some of the online work to do with it. Thank you for all of you who shared, Pam and Jane and Cindy and Marnie and oh, Lorraine and Tina, all of you, and all of you who had comments and questions. It's a great honor to be with you. Um, have a wonderful night or a wonderful day wherever you are. And take a little time each day and count three blessings in your life and send that out to the planet. Aloha. Now, Hi, Pam, everyone. I have to figure out how to save the chat. And uh, turn off your recording. Yep, thank you. Stop the recording.